Lovely friends, it's Margaret, and it's time to nerd out about Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. I listened to this on audiobook. I have heard things about the writing style, and it is not necessarily the most pleasing, but I feel like audiobooks kind of mitigate that. I'll be able to tell you guys more about that when I read China Rich Girlfriend, which is book two, some point in time soonish. This is definitely one that I want to pick up and have on my own shelves. It was really, really fun. I gave it four out of five stars. Uh, it was just a really sweet, nice rom-com type book. Crazy Rich Asians is about Rachel Chu. She is a professor of economics at some university whose name I don't remember. She has fallen in love with a fellow faculty member, Nick Young. They have been dating for the past two years. He has been over to California. He has met her family. Things are getting really serious. And so Nick asks her to come spend the summer with him in Singapore, starting out with his best friend's wedding. She ends up flying all the way out to Singapore to meet his family, only to discover that they are crazy rich. And the kind of crazy rich that makes Nick one of the most eligible bachelors on Singapore's bachelor market. Uh, the whole book is about how Rachel fits into the family dynamic and how what she has to deal with there and also having to deal with the fact that everyone wants her boyfriend and so everyone is trying to sabotage their relationship. So I went to the movie with my friends and then they promptly like sent it to me on Audible and I started it the very next day. Like this is one that you don't have to have read the book first. Like the book definitely informs the movie, but I feel like the movie has a stronger plot-wise uh, for Rachel. In the book, it feels more like Nick's family is the main character, and so Rachel kind of takes a back seat and she is acted upon, but she doesn't really do much action of her own. Whereas in the movie, Rachel is definitely the main character. She is more proactive in her storyline. We actually get to see her being a badass economist and like bluffing people and using all of those skills that she learned in college um, a little bit in the movie. So. I do, I do for that reason like the movie better just because there were places in the book where you could definitely tell it was written by a man. Uh, and that is one of the things that came up when my friends and I were talking about how you could kind of tell it was written by a man. The plot was really solid. It was a little bit slow paced at times, but I really did like how he wove the several different intersecting stories because Rachel's isn't the only story in the book. There were several different side plots that kind of came across and he did a really good job of making sure that each of those plots had equal weight and equal importance to each other and balancing them. Like we got some of the wedding preparations, we got some of the daily lives, we got some of Rachel's friction with his family. There were a few places where I felt like it was a little bit slow paced, but that's also because I really was in it for Rachel and Nick. And so there were times I was like, all right, well, I don't actually like care about this particular character. And so I was like, can we go, can we, can, can we go to, can we go back to them? <laughs> Um, though, that's the only issue though that I had with the plot was that occasionally it would just be about a character that I personally did not care about. That happens when you have multiple perspectives. It happens quite often when you have multiple perspectives. I really liked how he had his characters. While, while I, like I said, you could kind of tell in certain places that it was written by a man. Um, but for the most part, his characters were really well fleshed out. You, ca They all had very complex motives. Like it wasn't just, hey, I'm doing this because I want to be a douche. It was like there were always motives behind it. He always gave you a picture into their mind as to why they were doing what they were doing. One of the biggest ways that you see that is in the book you get his mom's story and how much she had to put up with when she came into his dad's family uh and how the the just the kind of the dynamic works that she is still kind of not seen as equal as um her husband's blood sisters just because she comes from a lesser family his mom's story is much more nuanced in the book we got to see a lot more of the family dynamic for characters like pick lynn and the family dynamics with characters like oliver some of the things that didn't quite make sense in the movie because i missed it like those things made much more sense in the book because we delve into the characters minds and we know and they did a really good job of picking for the movie of picking like the the surface level parts and pulling them into the movie even if you didn't necessarily get the entire complex thought process that was going um you still kind of got some of that so like as i'm reading it i would recognize stuff for them and like oh yeah oh yeah okay so that makes so much more sense now um, so definitely the book enhances the movie experience, but the book is not necessary to enjoy the movie. My one issue with the characters was that Rachel kind of was taking a back seat, much more reactive than proactive in the book. I would have liked to see her kind of confront some of these situations head on. I also can understand because she's in a completely new setting. She doesn't know these people. She doesn't know where she fits. And I mean, she was much braver than I would have been in that situation. 
I will admit that. He really does a good job um, of immersing you in this crate, this like high society Singaporean lifestyle. It sounded real, but it sounded the kind of real that you just kind of go, no, people don't really, they don't really live like that. What? But at the same time, I've seen stuff recently on Facebook and stuff that's like, yes, yes, people do really live like that. I really liked how immersive it was. I really liked that he like he he goes into like sights and smells. Um, there's a lot about food in this book. So be warned about that because you're gonna be craving some stuff. And you're gonna want something to snack on while you are reading this book. I liked how he structured the atmosphere and kind of enveloped the reader in this atmosphere and, and brought it out to us. Like it's just so like even with just being words on a page or words in my ear, like it was so colorful. Like you got the sense that it was a colorful world and it's a glitzy world. And so you just, I love it. He captured this really interesting mesh of like traditional Chinese culture mixed with what has been brought in from uh, more um, European centric culture. Uh, there were There were hilarious moments where you saw the two worlds clash. So it was really interesting to see that kind of um, cultural clash that you see, not just from like Rachel coming in to this foreign country and into this kind of more traditional Chinese mindset. You also got to see like how the culture was wearing in the country itself where you have the younger generation versus the older generation where you have more traditional people versus people who are more modernized. Um, and not that I, any of that is necessarily bad, but it does take some balance to it. And there are places where it is out of balance. Like I said, it was a very entertaining read. It was very enjoyable. I really liked it. It was just a light. It was, it was exactly the kind of romance novel that I enjoy reading. It didn't get too much into detail on certain things. It was just like perfect. Like, you got all the best parts of the relationship, um, plus some angst, because Margaret loves angst. It's great. I love it. That is it for Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up, and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I would love to see your lovely face here on a regular basis. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram. Both of those are at the word nerd, and don't forget that is a three in nerd instead of the E. That is it from now, my friends. I will see you later, and we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!